This is Koen. Hi. <laughs> of Van der Mei Guitars, he built my guitars. And today he's gonna show us around in a workshop. Yeah, so welcome you guys. And come on in. Ooh. Yeah, we're in the in the wood stash. The wood stash. You need extra dry wood for guitars because uh, that's better for the tone. I have some nice pieces of, for instance, black limba over here. Oh, really nice. <laughs> really nice orange patch. Yeah. When I tried your demo guitars, you built like two guitars, and one of them was the the blue one who had like a black limba with the flame maple. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like I think. One of your signature wood choices, yeah, yeah, types. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it sounds really, really cool. And yeah. it looks amazing. Uh, oh, wow! Like, this could be yours, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I think like this is what makes Black Limba so cool. It's like the orange patch. And it's also really rare. Yeah, uh, and this is a massive patch. Yeah, that's really massive. So I always hope to keep those uh, those spots in the in the guitar. So what's like the favorite top wood for you to work with? I just like a lot of different wood species. It's just uh, kind of like an obsession for me. Always looking for new pieces. But for guitars, I really like uh, maple. It's beautiful and it's natural colored. So when you don't stain it, or if you stain it, for instance, in a blue light color or a green or a red color. It, it works really well, like a blank canvas. Other woods, like the Tasmanian blackwood, is already brown. It's really nice from itself, but it's not so nice when you try to stain it. Same goes for the Buckeye Burl, which has a crazy figuring in the woods. And it's really cool uh, just to keep that, that kind of wood natural. Yeah, so here we have some guitars in progress. These have already been pre-colored and sealed off. Here we have like a copy of uh, Meryl's guitar. Yeah, it has the same finish, still needs some, uh, some work on it. Here we have, uh, for instance, a really basic guitar, which is going to be uh, a stock guitar at some point. One of the things I do right now is to use a Ridge Light as a fretboard, which is a composite material made in the USA. It's made from paper and some kind of resin, which makes it very durable, because they also make countertops for kitchens and even skate parks with it, so it's uh, that's pretty cool. When I buy my wood from the lumber yard, it's, it, it comes in these really rough billets, which are not so nice. So we need to uh, process them on a machine like this. This is a planer and a thicknesser. And when I put it on a planer, it will eventually look like this. So you can already see the grain coming out. So yeah, this is one of the first steps of building a, a guitar. Just make sure your rough woods are made square and flat. And uh, we do this, or I do this on this machine. So when I buy my uh, woods from various wood suppliers, I can only buy like a big piece of wood, which is of course way too large for a guitar. I use this large bandsaw uh, to cut really thin pieces for, for instance, a top. I'm not gonna demonstrate it now, but this is the machine I use for it. Got these really big teeth. Yeah, you don't want to put your finger in there. <laughs> <laughs> so when we've got a piece which has been cut on the bandsaw, you get these uh, thin slices and, and normally from the bandsaw you, you get the saw marks. And we use this machine which is a, a sander to make it all flat and, and usable for tops. After the woods have been processed for the body, a piece comes out like this, which has already been glued together, been through the thicknesser, nice and flat. Uh, we put it on the CNC and make out this pre glue cutout, uh, which has these little ears, locating pins for the CNC, uh, which helps me uh, in the production process. But it also helps me to find a suitable top. For instance, a burl poplar top, which can be fitted on here. You can glue it really easily. So to glue the top and the body together, we use a vacuum table. I made this one myself. The vacuum makes sure everything is, is held in place properly. Every spot on, the, on this contour 
has the same amount of pressure on it. So after the body and the top have been glued together on the vacuum press, we put it back in the CNC with the locating pins and then we can route out all the cavities for the guitar. So this one is going to have a Floyd Rose with just one volume and a five-way switch and on the back you can see the control cavity. This is the cavity for the springs for the Floyd Rose and all the contours. We do it on the CNC. This is the rough cut on the CNC and then we have to sand it all to make it really nice and smooth. All of my guitars have carbon fiber rods in, inside the neck. You can see that here. Here is where the truss rod is going to be. Very snug fit. There's also a little carbon fiber in every neck I built. This creates for a very stable, sturdy neck, which is great for aggressive metal playing. Okay, so before I put the frets in the in the neck, I have this jig. The whole neck has been pieced together. Uh, we have to make sure that the neck is as flat as it can be. Straight edge, which is like my tool to check how straight the fretboard is. Sometimes I have to adjust because when you glue a fretboard to the neck there can be some differences in the results and then you have to make sure the, the fretboard is super flat but also in, in a radius so it has to be flat this way and radius that way. Right now I also use a compound radius on, on my fretboard so it starts with a 12 inch radius and ends with a 16 inch radius uh, which makes it a little bit more time consuming for me as a builder but as a player it's more comfortable. A rounder fretboard here to play your chords and a flatter red fretboard here to, to play your leads. The bench where I uh, fret all my guitars I use this Arbor Press which uh, is like a, a one ton press. It has all these brass cowls which have been pre-radiused, also radiused from the inside so they don't damage the frets when they go in. This is a pretty common way to fret guitars. There are a lot of companies who hammer them in uh, with a hammer. I'm not really a fan of that. I like to press them in because then I can really make sure the, the frets are perfectly flush with the fretboard. So this guitar has already had a couple of layers of finish, fully sanded and ready for the spray booth to get its final coat. So here we are in the spray booth. Here's where I spray all the guitars. Um, they get their pre-coats, final coats, color coats, every, uh, everything to make the guitar sealed and, and shiny or matte, whatever the customer wants. This is my uh, final assembly bench. Here's where I do all the electronics uh, and the final stages of the guitar, putting the strings on, making the nut, making sure the frets are shiny and making sure the guitar is ready for the customer.